So guys, kidney transplant medication, two years on. What's changed from two years ago? What new meds am I taking now? What medicine might I be taking forever? And how on earth am I organizing myself enough to take all of these on time? Hey lovely people and welcome back to the channel. Before we get into this video, I have a question for you all. How many tablets do you think I'm taking each week? So how many tablets do you think I'm taking each week? Get down into those comments and let me know before you've watched the end of the video and I can check your answers and you'll find out just how much I'm taking at the end of this one. So with that out of the way, let's get straight into it by talking about my first medicine, which is my Adaport. Adaport or Tacrolimus is an anti-rejection medicine. Uh, this is something that I started taking straight after my transplant. It's used to stop your kidney being rejected by your body. So effectively it's dampening your immune system, making your immune system slightly weaker so that it doesn't recognize the fact that you have someone else's kidney or someone else's transplanted organ inside you and it helps to prevent that organ from being rejected in your body. Something that was looked at very closely straight after my transplant and still to this day are my tacrolimus levels. Your tacrolimus levels determine how much tacrolimus is in your bloodstream and as soon as you've just had your transplant the first two or three weeks those levels need to be quite high because obviously the stronger your immune system is at that time it may notice or recognize that there's a, a new kidney and it will try to attack it and cause some sort of rejection. So initially, straight after my transplant, I was taking six milligrams of tacrolimus each day, uh, twice a day, and they did have to increase that for me because they did find signs of rejection in my kidney. I went up to, I think the maximum I went to was seven and seven. I don't think I ever got higher than seven and seven. Um, and then since then, they've been slowly reducing it because as time goes by, your tacrolimus levels also need to reduce. So these tacrolimus levels straight after your transplant that I'm talking about need to be around 12 and 18, so in between that range. And then like I said, over time, that slowly gets reduced. Uh, my correct range right now is somewhere around eight. So every time I get my blood checked, I have to look for my tacrolimus levels and anything around eight is good for me right now. And slowly my dose has reduced and I'm now taking three and two. So a lot uh, different, uh, very much reduced from seven and six. And I think I might even reduce that even further still because my latest tacrolimus reading was 9.8. Uh, which is still a tiny bit high for me. The side effects of having a high tacrolimus level are very, very evident. Um, I would suffer quite badly from headaches at the start of my transplant, uh, especially when they were fiddling around with my dose to see what the correct uh, amount of tacrolimus I needed for it to be the correct amount in my system. Uh, I would always call them tacrolimus headaches to Rima uh, because I just knew that it was tacrolimus causing them. Um, the high level gave us, uh, gave me this migrainey headache. It was really, really bad. I used to suffer them from, suffer from them quite a lot. Um, so that is one of the side effects of taking tacrolimus, especially when you're taking too much of it and there's too much of it in your system. Uh, you do end up with these really, really bad headaches, uh, which you probably could call migraines because they're that painful sometimes. I will definitely be on this medication forever for the rest of my life because as I told you, without this medication, my immune system will just recognize that there's a transplanted kidney and start attacking it and start rejecting it. So the point of this anti-rejection medicine is to stop my kidney from being rejected. And the way it does that, like I said, is to dampen my immune system, make it a bit weaker, so it doesn't sort of recognize that there's someone else's kidney inside me. One other thing to mention that's very important about uh, tacrolimus is the type or the brand of tacrolimus that you take. Once you've started taking that type or that brand, you have to stay on that one for forever. You shouldn't really switch unless there are some real, real issues with the ones that you're taking. Uh, I think I've heard one or two people say that they have managed to make the swap, but it's not very common at all. Um, so I'm taking the Adaport brand of the medicine of Tacrolimus. So you might be taking Adaport or uh, there's another, I literally don't even know what the other brand is called because I've never even had to st uh, start it. But if you are starting on that one particular brand, you will most likely be on that one forever and you won't be able to switch. 
And because this medicine is quite strong, it's quite powerful, it's not very um, common, uh, I don't get this on my repeat prescription. I have to have this home delivered uh, from my renal outpatients. So every time I go to my hospital for a checkup, I have to check how many uh, tablets I have left in stock before I leave to make sure that I know whether I'm gonna place an order or not. And um, they come in big batches. I think I get mines for three months. Um, so four times a year I have to order them. Uh, so yeah, it won't be on your repeat prescription and you'll have to get them home delivered because they're such a special type of uh, medicine. Right, moving on to the second anti-rejection medicine that I'm taking. It's called MMF or mycophenolate. So currently I'm taking 500 milligrams twice a day of mycophenolate. Uh, I've been taking this tablet for a lifetime, forever. I've been taking it since I was 17 when I was first diagnosed with lupus in uh, 2008. And uh, literally until I would say two months ago, I was taking 750 milligrams twice a day. That, and that's been my dose since I was 17. And they've only just reduced it because of my recent pneumonia diagnosis in November. And I'm now taking 500 milligrams twice a day. And this anti-rejection medicine works in the exact same way as my uh, tacrolimus. It dampens my immune system to stop my kidney from uh, being rejected from my body. Uh, there are no real side effects to MMF. Um, not that I can attribute specifically to MMF, like the tacrolimus headaches. Sometimes all these side effects and all the different tablets we take are masked, so you don't really know which one is causing what. But uh, yeah, I would say that there's no real uh, common side effects from taking MMF. And similar to my tacrolimus medication, uh, because MMF is so uh, powerful and it's not very, very common, it's also uh, home delivered when I go to my outpatient's clinic. So the third tablet that I want to talk to you about is something I've mentioned a million times on this channel and a million times all over my social media. It's prednisolone. Prednisolone is a steroid that's used to act as an anti-rejection medicine as well. It's mainly anti-inflammatory, so it stops uh, lots of different inflammation happening around the kidney and inside your tissue cells. And it's a fantastically good drug at doing the job that, it want, that you want it to do. So as soon as I was um, diagnosed with rejection in my kidney, they, they started me on IV prednisolone steroids and then I've been taking the tablet form since then and it has helped my rejection greatly. I was taking 20 milligrams uh, per day as soon as the uh, rejection was found and that's been slowly reduced and I'm still on 10 milligrams a day. I'm hoping to take that down to at least five milligrams a day and fingers crossed, if all goes well, even though I've been told that I will most likely be on this forever, my plan is to get off it completely. I have managed to do that in the past and I'm hoping to do that again. And of course, I will share all my uh, tips and tricks with you guys uh, when that time comes. As mentioned in a previous video, I was taking prednisone steroids back in 2008 as well when I was first diagnosed with lupus. Uh, I'm not gonna repeat all the things I've said in that video. I will leave the links down below to the two videos I've made so far on prednisolone for you guys to check out after this one. Now, unlike the other anti-rejection medicines, these are on my repeat prescription. So whenever I need an uh, extra top up, I can just hand in my repeat prescription to my GP and then grab it from the pharmacy. Okay, moving on, no more anti-rejection medicines now, moving on to an antibiotic medication. So currently I'm taking an antibiotic called Cotrimoxazole. It's a 480 milligram tablet and I take it once a day. Uh, straight after your transplant, you are given two antibiotics to take for six months straight after your transplant. Because you're taking all these anti-rejection medicines that are dampening your immune system, you need something to, to top it up so that you're not just falling ill every single week and uh, what they use to top it up are two different antibiotics. One of them is cotrimoxazole. The other one is called valgancyclovir. Uh, like I said, you take them both for six months straight after your transplant. Mine were both extended by another six months because of the rejection that was found. And so I stopped them both after a year. But then since my PCP pneumonia diagnosis in November, I've restarted my cotrimoxazole. I've also been told that I should be, that most patients are, on cotrimoxazole for the rest of their life after a PCP diagnosis. But then I've also been told by some doctors who know me a bit better that because of the way that I'm living, my lifestyle and my sort of age, I should be able to get off it by the end of the year. So fingers crossed and I'll keep it updated on that. There are no real side effects at all to cotrimoxazole. It's just a regular antibiotic medication that you would take if you were, for, like I said, if you were ill or if you did have a virus. And uh, because it's such a common medication, it's just on my repeat prescription with my pregnisolone and I can hand it to my GP and grab something from there. So the next one, the next one is a type of tablet I think everyone is taking after a kidney transplant. It's a blood pressure medication, and the one that I'm uh, taking is called amlodipine. So I'm taking one 10 milligram tablet once a day of amlodipine. Um, I've been on lots of different blood pressure medications since my transplant. Uh, I started off taking Herbisartan. I've had a medication called Ramapril, which I'm still taking, which you'll hear about later in the video. 
I've also taken Nifedipin and now I'm on to Amlodipin. I guess I'm going through all of them to see which one works best for me. And that is literally why I'm taking so many different ones is because they all work in a slightly different way. I've been told that Herbisartan increases kidney crea uh, creatinine as well as it being really good at reproducing your blood pressure. So if that one works for you, that's good for you. That one wasn't working for me. So uh, they've swapped me over to Amlodipin and it seems to be doing the trick. And I'm gonna most likely be on some form of blood pressure medication for the rest of my life. Um, I'm not one that suffers greatly from high blood pressure. Sometimes my readings are a bit off uh, the chart when I go to hospital, but I think everyone's is because of the anxiety that you feel going into hospital. But uh, regularly checking it at home, I'm always in a good range. Uh, the perfect blood pressure to have is 120 over 80. Uh, so anything around there is really good. Anything in the 130s for me is really good as well. Uh, anything higher than that, then you uh, really need to look after yourself a bit more. There's absolutely no side effects to this medication at all. Uh, it's probably side effects if you don't take it because obviously your blood pressure will be high and you'll feel that. But yeah, no side effects at all. And it's uh, on my repeat prescription as well with my other medication. Now let's talk about that second blood pressure medication I just spoke about as well, Ramapril. Um, I'm currently taking Ramapril not for blood pressure reasons, but for another issue that I've recently found that I, my kidney is suffering from. Um, at the moment, my kidneys are producing too many red blood cells. So my hemoglobin count, my blood count is super high at the moment. And uh, it's so high in fact that I'm actually booked in for a procedure to remove some of my blood. And um, the Ramapril was given to me over the course of three or four weeks uh, because it uh, helps to manage the red blood cell production in our kidneys. So hopefully that would reduce it for me, but um, it is primarily a blood pressure medication. Uh, so you may be taking it for those reasons as well. I'm taking a really small dose of Ramapril, two and a half uh, milligrams uh, per day. So it's not affecting my blood pressure as much, but it should have an effect on what's happening in my kidneys. Um, there's no real side effects at all to it, uh, just like the other blood pressure medication. And it's also my repeat prescription as well. Right, three more to go. The next one is called atorvastatin. I've been taking atorvastatin uh, since my lupus diagnosis again, so I've been taking it for more than 10 years. Uh, atorvastatin is very simply a cholesterol maintaining uh, medicine. It just makes sure that your cholesterol is not too high. Um, I'm taking 40 milligrams of uh, atorvastatin once a day. Uh, I don't really suffer from high cholesterol. I've never been diagnosed with high cholesterol, but it's something that's always monitored uh, amongst uh, kidney disease patients and um, other um, seriously ill um, patients because cholesterol can get out of hand and cause lots of other issues as well. So it's always good just to have something helping you keep that a nice, in a nice range. There's absolutely no side effects taking atorvastatin and it's on my repeat prescription as well. And moving on to the next tablet, it is called Fludrocortisone. So fludrocortisone is a water retention tablet. Um, straight off my kidney, I was suffering greatly from um, using the bathroom too much. I was drinking the amount that I had to drink, which is quite a lot after your kidney transplant. I'm always drinking at least three liters a day. Um, and my, uh, my kidneys were filtering it so fast that I was using the bathroom three or four times in the night and I was going about seven times in the day and it was just impossible to keep control of. So they started me on this water retention medicine and um, they have to just make sure that you get the right dose. So initially they gave me too much and I ballooned up and I started to retain all the water and I wasn't using the bathroom. And it's taken about a good six months to get this right. And um, I've managed now to be taking one tablet every other day and that seems to be working perfectly for me. And there are no real side effects to taking this. Uh, the only real side effects for me is taking too much of it or missing my dose because I can really feel it. I can really feel my body's uh, water retention balance is out and I'm using the bathroom too much or I'm not using it enough. So yeah, no real side effects other than if you miss it or if you take too much. Uh, it's also my repeat prescription as well. And I have been told that I might be on this forever um, because I don't know if my water retention issues will sort themselves out. Um, but if that is the case, I've been told that's very, very common and it's not an issue. So guys, onto the last medication, it is called Omeprazole. So I'm taking 20 milligrams of Omeprazole each morning. It's a tablet I've been taking forever, again, since I was diagnosed with lupus back in 2008. Um, it's an anti-acidic medication. It stops any acid reflux in your stomach because you're taking so many tablets. It just makes sure everything is nice and settled and calm inside your stomach. Um, I remember taking this for the first time. It's very, very vivid memory of mine when I was 17 uh, in hospital, recently diagnosed. And uh, they told me to take some medication and I put it down with some water and it fizzed. It fizzed all the way down my throat and I didn't like it at all. It was like, oh, I hate taking this medication. Uh, I've gotten so used to it now and I've had quite a few different types of omeprazole over the years. And they've all got, uh, if you like shake it, they've all got these little beads inside it almost. And it does fizz down your uh, throat and into your stomach 
but you do get used to it in the end. It, it's just some of those things that I remember really, really vividly for some reason. And other than a bad taste left in your mouth sometimes, there are no side effects at all taking Meprazole. And I'll definitely be on it forever and probably anyone else who's taking a ton of medicines each day will be on this forever as well. Oh, and it's on my repeat prescription as well. So that is all the different uh, types of medicine that I'm taking to control my kidney transplant currently. Um, they've changed quite a bit from the start, like I've said. Uh, if you watch the very, very first ever video on my Transplant Fitness YouTube channel, that is the medicine that I was taking two weeks after my transplant. That was when I made my first ever video. So go check it out and see what's different and see what's changed. I'll leave the link down in the description for you as well. So before I do end the video, I do want to touch on how I manage all this medication. Whoa, slow down there, Mark. This video is already 15 minutes long and it has tons of information in it and I don't think that people can take that much more information. So how about we make a second video later on all about how we manage our medication? Cool. Uh, I will leave you with the answer to the question that I posed at the start of the video. How many tablets do you think I'm taking per week? And I'll let Mark finish it off. So guys, we've made it to the end of the video. Thank you so much for sticking around this long. I think this is gonna be one of my longer ones. Uh, if you did manage to stay this far, thank you so much. Maybe think about hitting that like button if you enjoyed it or if you found it interesting or if you learned something. And uh, think about subscribing to the channel, guys. If you like this content and uh, you wanna hear more from me, uh, hit that subscribe button and press that bell icon as well so you get notified every time I do make a new video. Um, you can find me on Instagram as well and Facebook and I think Twitter. I think I'm just getting back into Twitter. So I'll leave all those links in the description for you as well. And uh, let's check if you uh, manage to guess correctly how many tablets I take per week. I'm currently taking 100, 116 tablets per week. Yes, 116 tablets. And if you want to know what that looks like, well, here they are. <laughs> I put them all in a nice little bowl, and yeah, there's just tons and tons of tablets. When I put them in this bowl, I did think, wow, that looks like a lot. But in reality, guys, I mean, I feel like I'm one of the lucky ones. I know there are people who take a lot more tablets than me per week, and I know that might surprise some of you, but it is true. Uh, taking 116 tablets a week isn't that bad. I know that there's someone who I was talking to the other day, I think, who said they take 32 tablets per day. 32 tablets per day. That's that's two over 200 per week. So yeah, that is the life of a kidney transplant patient or any transplant patient in fact. So it's something that we have to deal with, something that we have to get used to and it's something that we all have to do. So yeah, it has to be done. So like I said, thank you all for sticking around this long. Uh, if you have any questions, put them in the chat or find me on all my social medias. I love answering all your questions. It, uh, it's a great community that we're building here. This uh, transplant community is always about helping each other. So yeah, ask any questions you like, make any comments you like, and, uh, and I'll see you hopefully on the next video, guys.